Hello folks, welcome to this new video. I'm Andrew from Yellow Hat Games and today we're going to talk about the Game Jam Trap. Yeah, I said it. Now, if you don't know what Game Jams are, okay, strange. Game Jams are challenges that game dev communities basically create with the purpose to challenge themselves, and, and it works this way. Given a theme, you have to create a game under 48 or 72 hovers. After the submission, there's the rating time. All the community that joined the game jam can rate the games and choose their winners. And after that, the winners are announced. This is all, basically. Okay, why game jams are great and awesome and why you should join them. Game jams are great because you can share ideas, you can watch how other people works uh, with that theme and that motivates you as well. Just think that there are games like Super Hot or Bob Ice You or Surgeon Simulator, Gods Will Watch You or, or Snake Pass that started like game jams and they actually became successful commercial games and that's awesome basically they started on a game jam and then they have that idea and and expanded and made that idea a full game probably these games won't exist if there wasn't a game jam that that made creators think to that idea that may happen to your project as well to your idea and that's just Awesome. The second point why game jams are great is that from game jams you can learn how to manage time. Like I said, in game jams normally you have 48 or 72 hours of time to, to create and complete your idea. And you need to make choices to organize your workflow. And that's great. This way you can learn how to manage time and maybe you can apply the same knowledge and the same skills that you acquire from the game jam to a bigger project or, or your dream project. The third point is that you learn to cope with stress and the crunch. Having just 48 hours of time, that may be very stressful. You need to keep working to stay focused. You want to complete your idea and you probably aren't going to rest at all. So here it comes this kind of coping with stress and learning how to manage stress and how to actually force yourself and so working and crunching. The fourth and the last point that I'm going to say on the pros why game jams are awesome is that it allows you to take a break from your main project. And believe me, this is very important because working on your dream or a big commercial game project it kind of drains your energy and you need to find somehow some new fuel to go on and game gems may do that for you they may gain you some new fuel to go on and turn more energetic on your project and finish it okay these were some point why i think that game gems are great now we're going to talk about the dark side of the game gems why game gems are bad or a trap or at least to me game jams look like this nowadays now first of all first point stress and crunching i know that a lot of people work better are more creative while under stress and crunch now that's not my case and i don't know why you want to put yourself under pressure and stress just to join a game jam from which you're not going to gain any prize at all most of the time and you're just consuming time and being stressed and losing your hairs. You are probably struggling with your own project, so there's no need really to put yourself under this thing. The second point that I'm going to tell you why game jams are bad is that you're not going to finish the game. No, most of the things that I'm going to talk here are time related basically. I enjoyed kind of three game jams in the last month, but I never finished those games. They are there. And watching the data on HIO, I submitted seven projects on my entire game dev career, but actually I finished just one of those that I published on Steam and, and it didn't go that well. But this is for another story. But the fact is that all the other jams that I, I joined, these projects are there on the ether of internet, basically. And I'm quite sure that most of those projects, I don't even want to retake them, rework them, and make them a full game finished. Those are just hours of work that are there, wasted. The third point that I want to make clear is that in game jams you have time restrictions. Now, time restrictions are quite okay if you're going to do a game jam, it's a challenge. The challenge is about the time, actually. But if you are a grown man like me, and if you didn't notice that from my long and wide bird here, actually I'm a grown man and I have a full-time job and I work on shifts and that translates 
for me, for myself, that I don't have two, two days to put on the game. Probably I have 12 or 16 hours if I really crunch and work on the game jam after working on my daily job. So my idea is that you probably can put this time that you're working on the game jam on your main project, probably on you learning some new stuff or creating something for yourself that isn't really focused on the game jam. Last but not least, the fourth point is that you're not going to focus on your main project, on your real project. And this probably is the most important one because this is the point which made me realize that I actually prefer to make game jams instead of working on my game and finish it. And that was kind of a new thing. I'm working on my game, the project isn't commercial and I want to finish this game. Now you probably already heard about this, but a lot of professionals say that the last 10% is the 90%. And I just started enjoying more of this feedback given by game jams by the fact that I was creating something new and that can be something addictive that because you need that kind of, of feedback on your brain to actually stimulate you because you are stimulated and you are focused and you, it looks like you're doing great things but actually that's a bad thing because you're not working on your main project don't do that don't join game jams with the purpose of that. Okay guys, this was all. I'm not saying that game jams are bad, but they may be a trap for you. So just, just pay attention to these little signals out there. You know, like the addiction to this feedback that you have and you want more and more and you keep doing game jams. Because if you're not working on your main project, that's probably bad. You're, you're wasting your, your skills, you're wasting uh, your project base. So let me know down in the comment section what do you think about the game jams? How do you approach them? If, if there are points that probably I didn't talk and you maybe want to add on the list and you wish that I was talking about and let me know if you gain new energy about game jams or what are the projects that you loved or which were the game jams that you loved more to join and if you are a solo dev or you worked on team all this stuff is pretty interesting to me because I'm a solo dev and having all these exchanges of ideas and creativity, you know, the creativity flow that that makes sense to me. So uh, I love that that part of the game jam and all the game dev community. If you like the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, share this with your friends or anyone. I'm Andrew from Yellowhead Games and more important, keep devving games!